Apple has further loosened some restrictions on iOS. It's actually been really interesting ever since the EU crackdown and now the US antitrust. How quickly Apple is running around trying to be like, ah, 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 um, well, no, no, like, we're, 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 we're not a... Apple has further loosened some restrictions on iOS, including now allowing retro game emulators on the iOS App Store and reforming its pairs pairings its pairs pairing system its pairing system to allow more devices to be salvaged for parts this is pretty cool news remember we talked recently about how we you know you, you never report on the good stuff, right? It's always yeah. about the... This is good! Yeah. Apple never had a formal rule against emulators, but it barred apps that ran external code, which included emulators. Apple is now explicitly allowing emulators, though they will need to be age-rated in accordance with the most explicit content available for them, and they must comply with all relevant laws regarding emulation. What was that old game? <sighs> Leisure Suit Larry. Yeah. <laughs> so I knew where he's going. That's going to screw up all the emulators. Yeah. Uh, anywho, the change is primarily due to recent regulatory changes in Europe. So, yeah, I said that Apple was changing things, but realistically what's happening is Apple is finally being forced to play nice. Um, Apple has also announced that it will be working on a new framework to allow customers and independent repair shops to use more existing parts from used devices rather than blocking their use with software locks under the assumption that the salvaged device has been stolen. Apple says this new system will still protect users' privacy. This will also include calibration for used parts after they are installed. So basically, they are finally walking back some of the pairing that they've been requiring. So there was this whole thing with batteries and with screens where you could take two perfectly working iPhones, take them apart, switch their screens, boot them back up, and you'd get like, a, depending on the part, you'd get an error message or you would get hindered functionality. It's almost like it was never about privacy at all, isn't it? Yeah. Because now, now that it's allowed, they're like, we can do it without compromising privacy. It almost never is. It's almost like that was the point the whole time. Was yeah. that they could, or that was what they could have done the whole time. It's almost like this whole thing was just made up. Yeah. Wow. Really? Yeah. yeah. You don't say. With that said, this is really funny. Um, some Apple fans don't seem to appreciate some of their new freedoms. This is great. Thanks to the EU, we have one more screen during the iPhone onboarding. Clown. Oh, no. Not everyone knows what a one more. browser is. Far from it. Why not ask for a default music player, default mail app, default camera app while we're at it? Unironically, that's a really good idea. Is it? I don't know. I don't know if I care about that personally. I... I think for music player, I don't. I don't know if I care about camera app. Like they, like this. As far as I can tell, yep. this is them effectively exposing like the app store as part of the opening your phone. Like I no, don't care this about is that. this is part of the um, the you can't have Safari just be the only thing on iOS. Crackdown. Yeah, but they're saying it's uh, the onboarding. Personally, I don't necessarily think that this needs to be a part of the onboarding. It just needs to be something that you can do. Oh sure, um, sure. That's fair enough. I mean. Honestly, I don't mind it at onboarding. Um, I, I don't know if I want every single thing that my phone can do. I, I, I don't necessarily want to make a choice where it now downloads that app or whatever instantly when I'm trying to set up a new device. That's compromise. Really kind of annoying. One screen where it has all the default apps. You can click into and them and skip. change them, or you can go all the way down and go continue. I'm on board. Compromise? Give me that skip button. All right, let's go. And, I, and then I don't care. Yeah, because like, what if I am an Apple user that's just like, yeah, I just want all the Apple stuff, which there's going to be tons of them. And that's the whole thing, that a lot of the people who argue for Apple's walled garden and Apple's anti-competitive and anti-consumer practices will say, they'll say, well, I just want, I don't want to pick. I just want them to tell me what's good. They still can. And you can still just use whatever Apple tells you to use. It's okay. It's fine. I find it interesting that Chrome is at like the bottom of the list. Well, I mean, no one said Apple couldn't maliciously comply. <laughs> I will say, uh, I've been using, I don't know if I've talked about this on the show ever. I've been using the Firefox mobile browser for like a decade. 
never had a single problem. It's fantastic. I have my my uh, like URL bar, search bar stuff is at the bottom. I prefer that a ton. It's a user setting. It's stuck for like years. It's great. I love Firefox Mobile. That's all I have to say. That's it. Someone was surprised. They're like, wait, what is that? They saw my phone and they're like, what is that? I was like, it's my browser. They're like, what do you mean? It doesn't look like Chrome. I was like, it's not Chrome. It's Firefox. And they're like, you use Firefox for Mobile? I'm like, yeah, it's great. I don't know. You're a liar. No, I'm not. Everyone who uses Firefox lies. You told me that. <laughs> no, 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 no. All the people, not all the people. The, context, the-, the context for that was we did a poll on Floatplane during the WAN show asking what percentage of people use Firefox. And I just knew and it then was Luke not right. went into our logs for the actual access. Well, not me. AJ did. But sorry, yeah. AJ uh, went into our logs for the percentage of float plane users that use Firefox. And those numbers were not similar. Not even sort of close. And like some no. people are like, oh yeah, you can spoof what browser it is. And some people do this for compatibility because a site will say that it doesn't work with Firefox. But if you just tell it that you're actually using Chrome instead, it will actually work just fine. I, there's pretty much no way the amount of people that do that make up the gap. Um, I, I can't say for sure, but pretty much no way. This is totally off topic, but... Do you make that poll, Dan? Is Luke a <laughs> <No>. liar? <laughs> the options are yes and yes, but I use Firefox. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they they no. like their polls. <laughs> this is amazing. I get weird with them when we do the Super Checks after party, the Floatplane exclusive stream. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, we Every single time you... Well, like, who's going to win the round? And they just get strange. <laughs> <laughs> I should look into that. We have a we have a viewer who can see every poll ever made and who made it. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, hmm, I should oh, be more fun. careful. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is just totally off topic, but I was I was looking at the chats, and I'm obviously mostly looking at Floatplane chat. But Twitch chat is upset because there's another ad break. This is really weird. So, someone here turned on ads on Twitch and like really intrusively um, and I turned them off and then someone here, I think Colton, I know, yes, Colton, Colton turned them back on and said, don't touch that setting anymore. We're having ads on on Twitch and I think they run every 20 minutes. For some reason, even though the WAN show gets interrupted every 20 minutes on Twitch for an ad break, and there are no ad breaks on any other platform where it broadcasts. Obviously, I'm not going to expect everyone to move over to Floatplane where there's a does, monthly subscription. Does YouTube not ad break during live streams? There are. We do not have them enabled on YouTube. Ah, uh, they're not enabled. I, and they're not on Facebook, for sure. We also stream on Facebook. What is it about the experience of watching on Twitch that makes it so that, no, no, hold on, hold on. Nobody has abandoned it in spite of the ad breaks that are not on other platforms. Like our viewership is basically the same as it always is. I have a theory. As much as I hate it, despise it even, the people want a smaller internet. They want to just stay on the sites that they use. And if they're Twitch frogs instead of YouTube users, they're just going to stay there. They will not have alternatives. It sucks. We had this really cool internet where there was all these unique, cool websites where people would do neat things, and now there's like... Like Justin.tv. People use like five websites. And yeah, oh, there's more than five websites that are possible. I mean individuals. Like, uh, there's, It's very common that individual people will not navigate to more than a very, very small handful of websites. They'll be like, yeah, I'm a Reddit and Facebook and Twitter user, and I Google things sometimes, and that's it. Yep, I can see that. 